Hello, welcome back to the channel where we're all about helping you to live your best life through optimizing your health. And in my last two videos, I've been looking at blood sugar and the impacts that can have on your short-term and your long-term health and some really easy ways to reduce your blood sugar without having to change exactly what you eat. In the first video, we looked at changing the order in which you eat your food. And the second video, I looked at implementing um, drinking vinegar before you eat to lower your blood sugar. In this video, I want to look at taking a walk after you eat your meal, which can also have an impact on your blood sugar. So the first question, as I've answered in previous videos, is why does blood sugar variability matter? Why does it matter if it goes really high? Surely that's a good thing. Um, surely the more sugar in my blood, the more energy that I have. So more sugar means more energy. It doesn't quite work like that. Although yes, sugar in your blood does provide fuel to your cells. Too much sugar in your blood kind of does the opposite. And one of the reasons why is because you actually need an optimal level of sugar in your blood for your body to run well too much sugar can actually produce damage to your cells and it makes it much harder for your body it's a higher challenge to your body to actually maintain those levels every time that sugar goes into your blood when it goes above that optimal range insulin or hormone has to come in take some of that sugar out and it will just store it for later which is a normal mechanism and those fluctuations are also very normal and healthy but if it goes too high this is problematic and this can lead to poor energy and poor focus throughout the day poor concentration it can lead to decreased mood as well as health issues into the future such as the common ones such as cancer heart disease and diabetes so if you're somebody that wants to reduce those reduce your risk of those disease but also improve your energy, your focus and your concentration, then this is definitely the video for you. So the question is, how does walking reduce my blood sugar spike? Well, when you walk, you're using the muscles in your body, predominantly the legs. And muscles need energy, they need sugar. And the first place it's gonna go looking for the sugar is in your blood. And so by going for a walk after your meal, compared to resting after a meal means that your muscles need more sugar, which means it can help the insulin, which is the normal mechanism for decreasing that sugar in your blood. It can help that mechanism by also, the muscles can also help to reduce that sugar and it does it much faster as well. So by taking a walk after the meal, you can then boost that process, which means your blood sugar levels don't remain as high and you help the body with this added challenge of bringing your blood sugars back to a normal level. So how do we know this works? Well, there is some research. Actually, there's quite good research on this if you need it. And there is a systematic review where there is basically the highest level of research you can get. They look at a whole bunch of papers and studies, and they actually found that the duration of the, sh of the walk that you take after your meal can be as short as two minutes, which can have a big impact on your blood sugar. Now, the question you're probably asking is, how long do I need to wait until after the meal? Now, you do need to remember that after you've eaten, of course, your body is busy digesting your food. You don't want to take it immediately after, but you also want to remember you don't want to do high intensity exercise. This is why a walk is really good because it's low to moderate exercise and you probably want to take more of a gentle stroll rather than a really quick move. I would suggest probably about 15 minutes to about half an hour after your meal is probably when you want to take the walk. And the study suggests that you can do it as short as two minutes and that's going to have a benefit. Now, I would think that the longer you take it, the better, but after a while, it goes to plateau. So I would say, um, just based on my own experience, is about anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes would probably be an ideal amount of time. At a moderate pace or a slow pace even, it's going to have an added benefit compared to resting. Now, due to the impacts this can have on your blood sugar, it can therefore have an impact on your energy levels, your focus, your concentration, all the things that I mentioned earlier. So as I mentioned in my previous video, 
what you need to do with this is just trial it on your own body because each person is very different and we know that for each person it can have a different effect some people might not be that beneficial some people can have a big impact particularly because it has an impact on your short-term symptoms such as energy focus concentration it's really easy to see whether it's going to have an impact for you so just give it a go after your meal go for a walk and then see how you feel um, later on in that day compared to when you just rest afterwards. So I hope you found value from this and don't forget to put in the comments how you get on with this. If you get any benefits, then do let us know because it's really encouraging for me as well as other people watching this to see the testimonials from people that do this. It will help to encourage them people. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this type of content, please do subscribe to see more videos like this one and to help support what I'm doing here. Have a great rest of your day. Stay healthy, look after yourself, and I'll see you on my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.